Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Oklahoma Venture Forum podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Golding. I'm joined today by Brian Pearson, Jr., CEO of EDU Rain, an online access for student housing. I have not heard of this approach before, so I'm excited to hear about this new business. Introduce yourself and tell everyone about EDU Rain. Yeah. Um, so uh, first off, thank you so much for having me, and I'm just thankful for Oklahoma's uh um, you know, welcoming spirit, uh, being from like the middle of nowhere outside of St. Louis on the Illinois side. Um, I really, really enjoy like a small town vibe. Mm. Uh, I consider myself a bumpkin because when I was in Dallas, like two weeks ago, I was scared of the tall buildings. Oh, <laughs> and so, um, so like, you know, one of the, one of the things about this company, you know, it's about the community. Mm. So in fact, you know, uh, you know, graduating, you know, getting out of foster care, I thought like college housing was going to be like this, like, you know, awesome step into like adulthood yeah. It's going to be all figured out. But like, you know, again, like I always say, like, how wrong was I with like seven moves, uh, 22 roommate, like 60K in debt, mostly wow. from housing. Wow. Um, okay. You know, that's part of the reason I worked in university housing. Mm. Um, and that kind of told me that like college housing is a maze with like limited options, safety concerns, like mm. the rising cost of both on and off campus housing. Right. Um, and, and also just community. 44% of students struggle to find a roommate at the college they attend every year. And in fact, the largest 175 colleges, to add more to this, can uh, in America can only house 20% of the undergrads. Okay. So obviously there's a gap there. There's a huge gap. You wow. know, um, uh, college administrators lack resources to support all student housing needs mm. and property managers face fair housing law hurdles in meeting this need, um, which is why we provide this solution that uh, tailors to colleges needs both on and off campus housing. Students can find roommates, housing, and build credit um, plus college admins and da- uh, college admins and property managers get dashboards. It's like all parties win using this platform. So that we you, create. you create a win-win scenario. You identified a problem and created a win-win scenario out of it, and that came out of your personal experience. Yeah, uh, I mean, I've I've also just been a good kid in my community mm-hmm. over a long period of time. Um, in fact, you know, you don't really, as a young person, sometimes you don't really think about what you did. You know, while while you're in you know your family's sure. house, um, McKendry, the first college that we were partnered with, is seven minutes away from my high school. Seven minutes away from my high school, and um, and I was a big time athlete in O'Fallon. I won yeah. Most Valuable Wrestler at one of the biggest high schools in Illinois. Um, and like I went from, and it's interesting about that story because I went from some kid that was like bullied. Um, to being like a big time wrestler, uh, and <laughs> so once again, you took you took life's lemons and made lemonades out, lemonade out of it. You did you turned something good out of something negative. You know, uh, one of my bullies in seventh grade uh, was the stat person for our wrestling team, and wow. Nikel from Atento Capital asked me like, "Well, did you beat him up then?" I was like, "No, I have won. <laughs> right. I have won. Write that takedown down. <laughs> yeah, tally my score. Right. But the reason I'm saying this, because I want to get back to the point of the podcast, is because the first property manager that I interviewed after we got a partnership with McKendry was a property manager in O'Fallon. You know, so we go there and like halfway into like a, my five minute pitch, this woman, she smiles, pulls out a phone and she's like, look. And I was like, um, Okay. And I used to coach O'Fallon for three years until I was like 21. And it was her kid on the high school wrestling team in O'Fallon. Okay. And she was like, I definitely know who you are. Okay. And like um, now McKendry does stuff with the future business leaders of America mm-hmm. at my high school. And like I hopefully, I'm hoping that Gene Sampson, the dean of the business school in McKendry, is telling kids that they could be like Brian because I'm a graduate of their of the high school and like uh and it just it's a really really good story. Yeah. Uh, at Investor Reveal for Techstars, uh they asked me how I got my first college and I was like, you know, I was doing a bunch of outreach. I didn't know it was going to be cuz I was a good kid in my community <laughs> years ago that like is the reason, you know, why like we've been able to do this. Like right. for example, um the person that um, was my advisor when I went to Southwestern Illinois College. 
she's now in charge of all student life. And like people are trying to get us to partner enough. And like I just remember being like, I'm gonna get this degree from SIUE. And I got that degree from SIUE. So like um so it's just interesting. It's just being that good kid in your community right. over time that I've been able to build. You know, I've also was the um the I was a program evaluator intern for a international college access organization. And I was dispersing scholarship dollars. I was helping them slice their data up. I was helping them digitize their records. I was sitting in on giant technology meetings. Wow. Um, and like I was uh, a part of some of their fundraising conversations with like AmeriCorps. Um, and they actually had wrote a, 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 a agreement years ago um, that like, you know, hey, Brian, whenever you get this platform not launched nationally, we will make sure that our organizations across America use it. And so, like, it's been a little bit of time because uh, I was an intern. And it was like, whatever you're building, Brian. <laughs> right, right. So I got to come back to them this year, see what happens. It could, because paying for housing is part of the problem, too, but also part of the solutions that you're offering, right? Uh, whether it's scholarships or other ways to help kids pay for the college experience and housing through your platform. Ooh, we haven't talked about scholarships in a very long time. Um, we're going to be relaunching it later okay. this year. Mm -hmm. Um, because we found that there is a huge need in finding scholarships to help you pay for living costs. Okay. Um, so we're going to relaunch that at the end of the year. But most of our revenue comes from the colleges and the property management industry um, because we've been able to find a solution that we can make it free to the students, we can make money off of the services that students need in a verified way, mm -hmm. and then like we found out that, like, oh, like people want a verified way. Uh, to find roommates, to find housing, to find ways to pay for it, um, to be able to uh, to be able to integrate with your school, and the school is trying to do the same thing. We did not. It's so interesting just being a good kid and listening to the adults around me, and that's why that I've been able to raise at the terms I've gotten. I've been able to maintain a majority stake in the company, even though we already raised four hundred five thousand dollars. Wow. Um, I put on a conference in St. Louis and people flew around America for it within a two week span. Oh. Um, and it's been interesting because like, you know, I talk about being some like ex foster care kid and stuff like that. But like, there's been some insane things that I've been able to do. And some people view me as somebody that's like being the next person to a lot of things. While I just kind of look at what I'm doing to help students help parents, help college administrators, and help property managers that are in our ecosystem. That's what I think about every day. Right. And it's interesting that people think about years ago and years years in the future. I'm just thinking like, who am I helping on the day to day? Am I getting on calls with people that are like, I love DD Rain? Am I getting on calls with people that are like, I tried to use it, it didn't work? Or am <laughs> I, you know, those are the things that I think about and I'm trying, that's why, I, you know, I, I used to be head of college outreach for a US Senate race in Missouri. Please don't talk politics with me. I <laughs> no, politics. no. Yeah, the best thing in business is to stay out of politics. But let me let me tell you something. <laughs> I've worked on both sides of the aisle. Mm -hmm. Well, so you got an understanding from both sides, both perspectives. And 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 it allows me to be neutral on everything mm -hmm. because I was raised as a Republican, and then I worked for and I worked for Bruce Rauner, who ran for governor in mm -hmm. Illinois. But I've also worked on a U.S. Senate race with a Democratic candidate in Missouri. Um, I've done. I've been a part. I was a lobbyist. In, in, uh, in college for mm -hmm. funding for students. And um, and like I would go to the Capitol building, I would present research, also sneak into some of these politicians' <laughs> offices uh, that I, we knew were going to vote no uh -huh. and try to get them the data points of why they voted no and try to persuade them. Uh, I've also hosted rallies and stuff like that. I don't do any of that stuff anymore because I'm focused on my business. Right. But like honestly, it's interesting at this point in life, so many people are like, Brian, we still see that. You still see that you did it. And in fact, like it's it's like some people are like have watched me kind of grow and from like this like ex athlete activist type figure into like, you know, what I thought was gonna be a politician into just a businessman. And uh, I realized like staying out of politics has been able to um grow my life in the way I want. <laughs> Interesting how things work out like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> So now you're going to be part of our Tulsa Pitch Day on March 13th. We're super excited. This is our third 
session in Tulsa for the 2023-2024 season for Oklahoma Venture Forum. We haven't we've been doing exclusively Oklahoma City up to this year, but this year we're we're doing three in Tulsa. The third one being the one in March 13th. You'll be one of the pitch presenters, which we're super excited about. We're super excited that Tulsa is creating opportunities like like yourself through Techstars and some of our other partners there. So on that date, on March 13th, you're going to have about five minutes to pitch. What's going to be the focus of your conversation? What are you looking for from an investor, from partners? Are you looking for uh, customers, clients, for for partners uh, on the service side? What are you looking for to take EDU Rain to the next level? Yeah, that's March 13th. So that means that um, I told the um, we're commu- we were communicating to about 150 investors every week throughout the TechStars program. Right. And we told them after demo day, there's about 45 days for people to close. So by then, there shouldn't be no investors. In fact, the only people that should the the investors that are going to be there, some of them might be in the round. You never know. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's very possible, yeah. <laughs> so uh, by that time, that should be figured out uh, because on our email list, we said this is our plan. And we um, and part of our plan is getting um, that 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 over that 180 number to 250 mm. um, by the end of this week, which is Friday. It's now Friday. Right. Um, and we are at about 220. So I just need to add um, a little bit more to get to 250, hopefully by the end of Tuesday in the day in the Wednesday in the day. Now that doesn't mean we're gonna get 250 checks, but well, like you know, you have to pitch a bunch. Yeah, you got you've got to knock on 250 doors if you want to get a, even the first check, right? Correct. <laughs> but the biggest things that I want to do there is the property manager, uh, the property managers, and the real estate industry, the brokers. I want them to be there. Also, the folks that work in college housing. I, I, I want to talk to every college, uh, college housing administrator in Oklahoma. That would be great. And, mm-hmm. like, they don't have to get the software from me. I would just love to have that conversation. Right. You know, because, like, at, at the end of the day, um, I mean, I don't like to do identity politics. But at the same time, I'm this ex foster care kid that I'm, like, you know, I've worked on both sides of the aisle. I'm, like, an LGBT person. And, like, housing is, you know, was, like, a big issue for me. And, like, to get to be able to create a company in this space. And like, you know, like people wonder like what kind of values that I'm putting out. I'm like, honestly, we white label our software for the colleges so they can put their values out. Right. You know, like um, honestly, like, and that's one thing that like business and politics has been different because like I've been able to just say like, I'm doing what I want to do. And like the colleges, they have their morals, their missions, their values, and hopefully they're good. And like, that's who we're like thinking about as we grow colleges with good morals, good, uh, that want to graduate kids that are innovative in their partnerships, Mm -hmm. that are innovative in their learning experiences. Uh, We've had multiple students on uh, CBT um, through Washington University in St. Louis, through uh, University of Buffalo, um, and you know, um, that is one way we've been able to get um, very skilled talent. Um, and because, like, we didn't make over $250,000 in revenue, um, be, like, we were able to get that that CBT status, which a lot of people don't know about. Right. A lot of people don't know about. Um, so, yeah, mostly the property management industry um, and the college administrators. Um, by then, we should have these checks. But if they want to come there, because at some point between 2025 to 2028, we will raise a Series A. Mm. And you, they want to get in the pipeline and they want to introduce me to folks that um, are in that area. I would love to talk to them and put them a part of our investor email list for those monthly updates um, so that they know in the 24 to 36 month time that there could be a possible another raise coming as well. Right. So you're working in property management, you're working with universities. I don't know what the number is, but right off the top of my head, I have to think there's a lot of universities with a lot of students, and, and every year new students need to find new housing, and even existing students need to maybe change their housing. So this obviously is a huge potential market for this business, and the potential for it to grow exponentially is there as well, uh, if you can get kind of launched and off the ground properly and find those right early partners. I'm so happy you said that because, like, you understand business. Like, a lot. I am sorry to say this. You get into, like, the venture world. You get into, like, the startup world. And, like, you realize that there are some people that just came in privileged and, like, are making decisions 
but no nothing and or or very small and you know like um i was my senior assignment in college looked at how to enroll and retain different individuals in higher education mm. and it, i looked at 138 colleges and their enrollments matriculation from high school cohorts to in college right. their graduation rates how much money university was spending on certain um programs to support students and so like now like when we talk about our market i'm like here's our market and like some people are like there's no way and i'm like I mean, we have a follow up conversation where we can go into my data. We have now at this point the treasure chest of information right. on higher education um, across the world. It's a sixty two billion dollar opportunity um, for college housing. I knew it was big. I knew there was a ton of opportunity there. And it sounds like you found a novel approach to solving a problem, which is the key to starting a good business. Yeah. I mean, the first three colleges we were partnered with uh, Cal Poly. Um, uh, over 21,000 students mm-hmm. in, in California, McKendree, um, in, uh, Lebanon, Illinois, seven minutes away from my high school. Um, and then, uh, Webster university, they have 25 campuses across the world. Wow. Um, and, um, and I'm really excited about that. And in fact, um, we are displaying quotes from them using the software on Times square next week. Wow. So you're you're blowing it up. You're getting out there. You're really putting the word out. Well, yeah. I mean, because like when I go and talk to investors, I'm I'm just like, you know, sometimes they're just like, there's no way that you've been able to do this. And so we've had to be aggressive about what we're doing. Right. <laughs> like we have to be like, look, people are getting housing through us. People are finding roommates. We're creating ads. We're creating real value. We're integrating with college IT departments with their uh, identity management. Um, like we are uh, interviewing users. We're partnering with Google for uh, Google Cloud to implement AI in our platform. Um, We're trying to like, you know, University of Tulsa has a real estate major in a real estate club. We're trying to hire students from there to come a part of our sales and marketing team. That makes like, sense. you know, like we're um, we're really doing the things to like drive right. the economic value of the platform. We brought on a CTO. We brought on a CPO. We brought on a UI UX designer. We hired at Cal Poly. Um, we gave kids ownership that were like in the company because they're like, look, I'm 29. Like, <laughs> I am young to be a CEO. So like I trust young people in doing this. Mm. If you give us your passion and talent, you will get ownership in the company plus your wage. You know, we had a conversation with one kid, you know, he was like, well, Brian, like, you know, I kind of just want my money. I was like, you're going to keep your money and own part of the company too. Hey, and he was like, oh, I, I'm just not used to that. I'm used to hearing people, companies trying to just extract all the value from the, the, the intern and not give value. You like... Not only has given us the research we need to do, the work we need to do, the the industry partners, but also you gave us a chance to own part of it too. And I'm like, I, you know, honestly, I, I I'm very shocked at like how this has been put together. And I was like, well, you know, working in politics, the job descriptions are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. So you got to be every. I have to right. be everything. Everything to everyone, right? And, you know, um, <laughs> you know, and it's and it's interesting now, like um, how transferable those skills have been. Mm-hmm. And you know, like um, and you know, I came into TechStars. People were like Brian can pitch, but I don't know if he's a great operator. So I came to TechStars to become the best operator. <laughs> sure, that makes sense. You know, like uh, and you know, um, in the way that we operate now. Like the organization is starting to build itself. Mm. Um, today, we launched a, a, a feature where the college can work with the property managers themselves on our platform. Okay. Direct? Yes. Lowers barriers, speeds it up, reduces cost. Sounds, sounds like a good idea. Yeah. But like that was like insider knowledge yeah. that like, even that was a thing that we needed to do. Right. Well, as you guys can tell... Brian is fired up and excited and motivated about EDU Rain, and he's going to put on a very top-notch professional pitch on March 13th for OVF for the Tulsa Pitch Day. We're super excited to be in Tulsa. We're super excited to hear Brian pitch on that day. We're excited that you were on the podcast today. I appreciate it very much. Hey, I am always happy when folks give me space to talk about the things that I care about. And the folks that I care about, and those are the people that are in 
ED Reigns network in our system and that are growing it to this day. And I look to, you know, sign 29 more agreements this year. <laughs> I signed one on Wednesday with the college and uh, get 600,000 units this year. Oh. Um, we've already um, onboarded about a thousand units this year already. And so like, you know, right now, like um, <laughs> I was thinking about last year and my advisors and mentors is like, Brian, let's wipe the slate because you're going to kill it this year. Guys, do not miss the pitch presentation with Brian Pearson Jr., EDU Rain, March 13th, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Of course, 36 degrees north, the original base camp. See you there. Make sure you sign up. Be in the room so you can hear the presentation and then ask questions of this young man, young CEO who's doing it, who's making stuff work, and our other pitch presenters that will be on that date. So again, March 13, you guys sign up. You guys know ovf.org is where you get all that done. I will see you there on March 13th.